This is part two of the lumbar vertebra um, image analysis. Let's start with the lateral projection. Image analysis guidelines state for a lateral lumbar um, spinous, spinal um, projection that the intervertebral foramina should be demonstrated in profile as well as the spinous processes. The right and left pedicles in the posterior surfaces of each vertebral body should be superimposed. Their intervertebral disc spaces are open. Vertebral bodies should be seen without distortion. The lumbar vertebral column is in the neutral position without any flexion or extension. The long axis of the uh, lumbar vertebral column is aligned with the long axis of the exposure field. If utilizing a field of view of 8 by 14, then the central ray is centered at L3. This is generally utilized when uh, performing a lumbar spine projection only. In this projection, you will um, demonstrate an area from the lower T-spine, T12, to L5, S1, intervertebral disc space. Generally speaking, you will be performing uh, in clinic and at the clinical sites um, the lumbosacral spine projection, which utilizes a field of view of 8 by 17. The central ray should be centered at around L4, and this demonstrates an area uh, from the lower T spine, L, uh, the 11th or 12th thoracic vertebra, to the coccyx. So let's talk about identification of rotation in a lateral um, L-spine uh, projection. Rotation uh, can be detected on a lateral uh, lumbar projection by evaluating the superimposition of the right and left posterior surfaces of the um, vertebral bodies. On a non-rotated lateral projection, uh, these surfaces are going to appear superimposed as if they were appearing as one. However, on uh, rotation, the posterior surfaces are not superimposed, uh, but one is actually demonstrated anterior to the other. Um, because both sides of your vertebra, thorax, and pelvis are mirror images, it's very difficult to determine uh, from rotation um, which is posteriorly or anteriorly, unless you, you, you can visualize the um, 12th posterior rib. Um, and the 12th posterior rib um, that demonstrates the greatest magnification and is situated inferiorly is adjacent to the side of the patient position further away from um, the IR. So in this projection, you can see that it's magnified here. So we're seeing the posterior surfaces of this um, vertebra not super, excuse me, superimposed, indicating um, that the there is some rotation. And this is indicative that the um, right side of the patient is rotated posteriorly. A um, re couple reasons I know this is because we can see our 12th rib, I believe it's coming down here, this little shadow, um, and it is um, rotated posteriorly. It's coming out from the back end. We're also seeing the posterior surface um, of our um, L spine. And the reason we see it um, is because it's getting closer to the IR as we're rotating posterior. So we're able to visualize it. You'll see in the next projection um, the difference.
In our image analysis, we have um, a analysis where the patient is actually anteriorly rotated. We're not so much seeing, we do see, I'm sorry, the posterior surfaces. However, um, when looking at this patient, you can see that the 12th rib that is closest to the IR is anterior to this spine. Um, that tells me that the right side is positioned anteriorly. It's magnified. I can clearly see it. Um, but again, you know, looking at your patient and determining which way they are rotated is the best way. Um, and, and making sure that that mid-coronal plane is perpendicular with the IR, IR to um, ensure that you get that proper superimposition is uh, most um, important. Let's move on to the L5 S1 uh, spot projection. Image analysis guidelines for the L5 S1 um, spot projection state that the intervertebral foramina between the L5 S1 junction um, should be demonstrated open. The right and left pedicles are superimposed and in profile. The L5 vertebral body and sacrum are demonstrated without distortion. Pelvic wings are nearly superimposed. And the L5 S1 lumbosacral disc space should be at the center of your exposure field. The fifth lumbar vertebra and upper sacrum should be visualized as well. You can see I have included the image analysis guidelines for you to look over. Let's move on and talk about um, our spot angulation. Uh, we know that um, with the spot angulation, uh, we need to match up our interiliac line. In the first image here, you can see that the interiliac line, the imaginary line there, is perpendicular with the central ray. So are perpendicular with the IR. If it is perpendicular, then you leave the central ray perpendicular. You can determine this too from checking your uh, lateral projection because you're taking that image in a perpen utilizing a perpendicular central central ray. Always check and see is is my spot or open already? Do I need a um, angulation for the central ray. In the second image, you can see that the interiliac line is actually in a caudal projection. That is the typical body type, the typical patient that you're going to encounter. So you're going to need to utilize that um, um, angulation for the um, uh, spot to open up that L5-S1 junction. In letter D, you can see that this patient has an interiliac line that is actually sitting um, cephalic. So you may have to use a cephalic central ray. But um, as time goes on, you will um, gain or grasp a better understanding um, with the more practice you have with uh, performing L5-S1 projections. So let's talk about this image analysis of the L5-S1 um, disc space. Again, we have to remember to adjust for that uh, sagging interiliac line. So when you look at this projection, the first thing is, do I have all my anatomy? Yes, I have all my anatomy, but image analysis guidelines state that I need an intervertebral disc space that is open. And is my space open? 
No, it's demonstrated as closed. So therefore, um, in this projection, the central ray was angled uh, perpendicular with the IR, where this patient um, really needed an angle of a central ray um, directed caudally to um, be parallel with that interiliac line. This concludes our um, image analysis on L-spine. Um, you, while you're taking your quiz, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to bring them up to me um, or email me or um, when I'm out at clinic, we can discuss the um, Im image analysis. Thank you for uh, participating in the image analysis.